So welcome to another video of Supplement Sense. We are continuing our series on how to read labels. And in the first video we went over how to read just general food supplement labels. Um, stuff that you find on most of the nutrition labels that you're looking at. And today we're going to focus on more specific information about a protein powder label. So there are three basic categories that I personally like to put proteins into and that other people would agree with. These are kind of just my categories. You might not find them listed on stuff, but this is how I like to kind of compartmentalize the world of protein powders because there's a lot of different stuff out there. So there's three different kinds. We have gainers, which are for gaining weight, meal replacements, which you can use instead of eating a meal, and then everything else, which actually this category here encompasses the majority of protein powders you're going to find. This includes plant proteins, and things that are not whey protein, basically everything else that's not a whey protein, is included in the other category. Now let's talk about gainers first. Weight gainers are high in everything. They have a lot of protein, a lot of carbohydrate, and a lot of fat. Usually more carb than protein or fat, because again, we're talking about putting on pounds. This is great for those individuals who are trying to gain weight to play sports, or maybe someone who's trying to gain weight to put on a lot of muscle, they can't seem to eat enough, or for people who have a hard time eating enough food actually um, for other reasons like maybe their stomach doesn't work as well and a lot of food they have a lot of food sensitivities some people need to use a supplemental protein powder to help maintain their weight um, and then the next category is going to be meal replacements this is kind of in between as you can tell there's a lot of protein some carbohydrate as represented by the smaller arrow and then a little bit of fat as represented by the smallest arrow so here we have lots of protein, some carbs, and then a little bit of fat. Um, if we look here, I drew some arrows. Meal replacements are sometimes considered gainers, depending on who's using it. But a gainer can always be considered a meal replacement because there's enough stuff in it to basically count as a meal. But again, that's still kind of relative to the person, relative to their daily calorie intake and their goals and everything like that. Um, but a meal replacement is generally considered something that could be used instead of a meal, but it doesn't have a lot of carb and fat, so it's not a gainer. And then the third kind we have is just everything else, which is high protein, low carb, low fat. This is the majority of protein powders you're going to look at. Some people might also refer to this as a post-workout protein um, because you want protein, but you don't want carbs and fat to ruin the hard work you just did at the gym. So this is just a good way to get a lot of protein in your diet without having excess carbs and fat. So it's just like, you know, really truly protein powder. So those are the three different kinds. Now I'm gonna pull up my label and the label that I have falls basically into this category. It's more of a meal replacement. So, let me get this on here. Okay, so here is a label that you might see on a protein powder. Uh, you'll notice some words are different. Obviously it says serving sizes accounted by scoop. Um, that's really, I guess, the main difference you could tell right off the bat. So in the first video, we talked about the first place your eyes should go to when you look at a supplement label. It should not be here. This is the first place a lot of people look, but it's not the first place you should look because this means nothing if you don't understand this right here. Serving size is the most important part to look at. And on protein powders, this is even trickier because proteins have different scoop sizes according to different brands. One brand might have a scooper that's this big around, a different brand has a scooper that's this big around. So this serving size obviously is going to have more protein in it than this serving size, but is there more protein per gram of protein powder? So really what you need to do is consider the scoop size. It's going to tell you this one is 47 grams per scoop rounded scoop it says. Um, so you need to really compare how much protein is in a scoop size, how much protein per gram to determine how protein dense the protein powder is, to determine if it has enough protein for you, and to determine how many scoops you need to use to get enough protein to, according to your goals. So scoop size is huge, you really need to pay attention to which brand has different sizes of scooper. Now. Uh, let's talk about the second point, the percent daily value. We did go over this in more detail in the first video. I'm not going to talk about it too in depth, but basically you're going to see this here with a little asterisk that tells you to look over this way. 
percent daily value based on a 2,000 calorie diet. What this means is that all of these percentages here, including the percentages for the vitamin content and the mineral content, are dependent upon the calories you eat per day. Most people don't eat a 2,000 calorie diet. Most people eat a little more, maybe a lot more, maybe less. So these percentages are really relative. You have to adjust according to what your daily diet consists of. Uh, the third point that I want to go over is carb, fat, and protein relationship in a protein powder. Basically, if you recall what was underneath this piece of paper, the amount of carbs in relation to the amount of fat in relation to the amount of protein determines what kind of protein powder it is. This one is 22 grams of protein and it has 15 grams of carb and eight, uh, 6 grams of fat. So it's mostly protein, some carbohydrate, a little bit of fat. That's why I consider it a meal replacement protein. Um, if we continue here, we can look at uh, the carbohydrate section. Now this is a part where a lot of people get very, very confused because the first thing that you're tempted to look at is this number right here, total carb. But remember, 15 grams of carbohydrate does not mean 15 grams of calorie yielding carbohydrate because not all of these carbs have calories in them. You have to subtract the fiber content to figure out what actually makes sense as far as the carb content and really all you need to look at is the sugar grams. But if you want more on that, check out the first video I went over in a lot of detail. Basically just remember that the carbohydrate does not always mean sugar. You have to really look at it in detail and make sure that you're understanding which carbs are giving you calories because not all of them are. Last point that I want to make is something that you're going to see on protein labels. It says sometimes, not all the time, not intended for weight loss. You might see that on a protein powder and you might get confused. I've had customers ask me before, but I want to use a protein powder to help me lose weight. I want the protein, the benefit that it has at controlling my appetite. I want to be able to control my diet better. I want to use it in my breakfast smoothie, whatever. Why do they say it's not intended for weight loss? That's just a legal disclaimer. In all honesty, they can't say that it's going to make you lose weight um, because it may not. Obviously, if you accidentally grab a gainer, maybe it makes you gain weight. So it really depends on your use of the powder, but it can be used to assist in weight loss. It's just not called a weight loss product because they can't call it that because it wouldn't make sense. So um, I hope that helps you understand a little more about how to look at a protein powder label and review. Really the first and most important thing that I want to point out is the serving size. Check the scoop size. That's really what makes a difference among protein powders. I've seen people get confused. They say, well, there's more protein in this one because the label says 50 grams and the label on that one says 20 grams. But the scoop size on the other one is two times as big. So it's all even in the long run. So scoop size, everything else is contained in the first video for the most part. Um, hopefully that made some sense to you, helped you understand how to look at a protein supplement better. And uh, be sure to subscribe so you can keep getting our videos coming your way. And uh, we'll see you next time on Supplement Sense.